We'll watch them take shape. Automotive oil filters. We'll have all the dirt. Filing cabinets. You can file this one under F for fascinating. And blown glass. We promise you full transparency in this report. If you take a close look at the products around you, you'll notice that many are made of parts that have been assembled together. One way factories make product parts is by melting materials such as metal, rubber or plastic, then pouring or injecting them into molds. To make a plastic part for a product, the manufacturer has to first commission a mold making company to design and produce a plastic injection mold. The mold begins as bars of chromium steel, a high durability metal that can withstand repeated high pressure injection of plastic. Workers assemble several bars into a block called a mold base. They mount this base on a milling machine, which shaves the bars to the right dimension. This step is critical, enabling them to later machine the base into a mold that's faithful to the technical design, right down to the hundredth of a millimeter. A mold usually consists of two halves, each of which is comprised of several components. The factory drills strategically positioned holes in the bases for the guide pins and bushings that hold the components together when the plastic's injected. A grinder now goes to work smoothing and leveling all surfaces. This prepares the base for the high precision machining operations that will transform it into a mold component. A computer guided tooling machine called the CNC slowly machines the base, wearing away the steel particle by particle to create the mold component's shape. This one, part of a mold for the plastic rim around a snowmobile's front headlight, takes 20 hours to complete. From here, most mold components go on to a second tooling machine, especially if they have some fine detailing that this CNC machine is incapable of carving. The second machine is outfitted with a copper electrode in the shape of the plastic part, in this case a snowmobile oil gauge. After polishing the electrode to ensure flawless casting, they use a sophisticated measuring device to verify the dimensions. The electrode goes face down on the second tooling machine called the EDM. Directly underneath is the mold half that's already been partially formed on the first machine. A strong electric current runs through the electrode and penetrates the mold, forming a cavity in the shape of the electrode. After tooling, they drill coolant lines. This is for the cooling fluid they'll use to accelerate the hardening of the molten plastic. Some plastic product parts, like that snowmobile oil gauge we saw earlier, have lettering on them. The factory engraves the letters in reverse inside the mold cavity. After the plastic's injected, the writing comes out frontward and raised. The surface of the mold cavity is pretty rough from all that tooling, so they polish it smooth to ensure a proper casting. Here's what the two halves of a finish mold look like. The pins and bushings fit together to close the mold before injecting the hot liquid plastic. Once the plastic cools and hardens, it's just a matter of extracting the molded plastic part. Here's a different molding method. A two-step process they're using to make these buttons that go on the steering handle of a jet ski. First, they mold a structural base out of hard white plastic. Then they put the base into a second mold and inject a rubber-like gray plastic. This softer plastic covers everything but the raised lettering, giving the button a softer feel. 
Factories also make molds for aluminum injection and rubber injection, among other materials. They build those molds from different types of metal, but using the same techniques.